and Mortuary is really deep into the music, curation of music, and discovering young musicians. And that's really our DNA. When it's authentic, when it's real, then it works. I'm here at the Montreux Jazz Festival together with Mathieu Jaton, the CEO of Montreux Jazz. Mathieu has been the CEO for 10 years now. Now 10 years in a row, yes. And since you took over after Claude Knopf passed in away. In 2013, when Claude Knopf passed away, yeah, and I uh, had a chance to spend 15 years before with him as a secretary general. So I'm starting full time the festival in 1991. And you still look young, young and fresh, so congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Got gray hair, right? <laughs> after, out of 12 days of the festival, I'm trying to take care of myself and just to go till the end of the festival. It's long, it's yeah. a long festival. I can imagine. So this is the first festival after the pandemic. Uh, you had a reduced version last year. How does it feel like? It's something which is very emotional to us because, uh, and to everybody, for the audience and also for the artists. When I see the smile of the artists going on stage and having the feeling to welcome back the audience and to share again the music with the audience is something very special to them and also for the audience. So I think it's fair to say that the festival has always been quite innovative, also using technology since early days, right? Yeah. When Club Knobs was also using uh, filming a lot and then recording a lot. I mean, where does this mindset come from and, and what does it mean today? You're right to say it starts from Claude. Uh, Claude really was really a technology good guy. He was always looking for the last technology uh, in filming, in phones and everything. And uh, he started very early in filming the festival and that was his first major idea to film and record any single note of the festival. Uh, we're talking about 1967. At that period, filming a concert during a festival was something that was not existing at all. He was right because during that, his goal was to give to the artist the tapes. Uh, and then the artist took the tapes and launched the recordings of Montreux, written on it live at Montreux. And it started to expand the brand Motor Jazz Festival around the world. So for, for me now is to say, okay, what is the next steps? What are the new technology? And we have a brand new artistic director in the house to capture the images of the concerts, not only for the halls, not only for the archives, not only for television, but also all for all the social networks, TikTok, Instagram, and it's a totally different way of filming. And also YouTube, uh, because the experience is different. Most of the concerts are streamed also uh, online, uh, which is quite interesting. One thing you're very close to digital and how to increase the audience on digital. So it's where also we've, we've met on education and on digital, right? Exactly. So what the audience should know, we're not only supporting the two weeks of the festival, which are amazing, but also a lot of what's going on around. For instance, Spotlight, yes. uh, which uh, if you have Spotify, you should, you should uh, register to that. It's a playlist with every month new artists that are identified by, by the Montreux uh, Jazz team. And we really want to support new artists, but also we want to use and support new technologies. Um, I still have to register on TikTok, by the way, <laughs> mea culpa. But, uh, you know, this is, this is where it's happening, right? Yeah. This is where people discover new music. And this is a platform you use a lot. TikTok is a very specific audience for very specific artists. So when we're doing spotlights, is definitely the right way of using TikTok for Spotlight because we need audience for the young musician and that's the goal of Spotlight. What is very interesting now is that you have like a, a range of technology or range of opportunity and we need to use that. Absolutely. I mean, our business is about humans, right? It's, it's people talking to clients and of course, technology becomes more important. We use technology to interact also with clients, to use you know, artificial intelligence, to use different channels also in terms of uh, publishing and you know spreading content so yeah. which we're producing so i think embracing technology is super important and i think what what you mentioned before is very interesting and is also why and i understood why also julius is a partner of, of montreux is because we're not only a festival of two weeks and we're trying to bring an experience to the audience rather digitally or physically all year long with various activities and especially for the young musicians and, and that, that is for me the future uh, developments of all the festival. One of the most important thing is the, uh, is the intimacy and the proximity and the human factor, uh, which is so important in Montreal with the artists and the audience. Small capacity, huge experience, premium level, very high quality, and that fits perfectly to your, to your brand. This is not sponsoring. 
this is really a partnership because we all trying to leverage our brand together and mainly to bring an added value to the audience and to the audience. Obviously, Mathieu, you love music. That's, that's probably the core of your job, but Hopefully. you're also a musician, right? You still play? Like you, no? Yeah, sometimes. Uh, sometimes. sometimes. You have time to play? <sighs> Honestly, it's a struggle. Um, what was your instrument? Well, I started with the piano, you okay. know, nice classical conservatoire, like. <laughs> then Classic, I, classical or classical, classical, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. And then um, at some point, I started to go away from the score, you know. Yeah. So my piano teacher was telling me, no, 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 you have to play like it's written. Um, but then, you know, I said, no, no, I want to improvise a bit. And, and he said, yeah, but you, you should go to jazz school then. So I actually moved into jazz a bit and then rock music and bands and guitars. Yeah, the whole, the whole thing. S same wise, because my parents was in classical music. My, my father, my sister was playing piano. Uh, and exactly like you, I was just, I was bored about reading everything and playing exactly what was written. And uh, I heard the sound of Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, uh, Die Straight that appeared, and a friend gave me a Fender guitar just to test it, and I fall in love with the guitar. I uh, started more the rhythm guitar than the solo guitar because uh, I was uh, very happy in playing good rhythm, etc. Starting to sing with my guitar, and uh, I had a band uh, called the Silk Waves. The Silk Waves? <laughs> Silk Waves, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we had a band in the bank, actually. Oh, cover cool. Band. We were playing, so we used to just a cover band and, you know, playing at bank events. Then we stopped. Uh, so for me now, it's just, you know, me, myself and I basically yeah. playing uh, in my little studio. Yeah. It's a bit this bubble, you know, getting out of, of the day-to-day -day banking okay. world and just escape for an hour into something completely creative. I can imagine. Without yeah. any objectives, any output. Um, so it's a bit the opposite, right? It's, it's, uh, I like to just do it for myself or play with the kids. So what would be your advice to, to young musicians, to people who want to really start a, a, you know, a real career? What I should recommend to the young musician is first, keep your passion, be patient, uh, remain authentic, never try to do something that is not you. Good. Well, thank you very much, Mathieu, for your time, for the chat. My pleasure. It was a thank real you for having me. To see you. And thank you for uh, joining and see you in Montreux. <laughs>